Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Mike Vandersteen. And today we're very pleased to have one of our 22 department heads with us, Mr. Jim Groff, our Child Support Director. Jim, it's good to have you with us. Thank you. It's nice to be here. I'm, I'm glad I could attend. Jim has been the Child Support Director, I think, for 19 years, over 20 years with Sheboygan County. Very experienced, very knowledgeable and it has the important task of overseeing a department that is providing financial support for children and families. And so we're pleased to have Jim here to talk a little bit about the roles and responsibilities of the Child Support Department. Thank Jim, you. please set the stage by sharing with our viewers a little bit about yourself and, and uh, how you came to work for Sheboygan County and, and if you're from the area. Well, I'm, I'm from Keele originally, which is 20 miles west of here, I believe it is. and um, I. Um, Grew up in, in Keele and uh, attended schools in uh, Appleton, as well as in, uh, I went to Lakeland and, and finished my degree there. <clears throat> and I've been in child support, as you said, for, for 19 years and two additional years in health and human services as their accounting manager. Um, I've been uh, running the agency and I'm, I'm happy to say we've been doing very well as far as meeting uh, the goals that we've set and, um, and working with all the all, all our customers, as we like to call them, because uh, we try and you, not we try not to use any negative uh, sayings about people that that do pay child support and those that collect it also. What is the mission of the child support department? The mission of our agency is um, I have to read it. I'm sorry, but uh, it's too long. I should shorten it, but uh, <laughs> to ensure adequate financial and medical support for families through an aggressive approach in locating obligors, establishing and enforcing court order, child support and medical coverage, and in obtaining um, uh, child support uh, orders, as well as establishing paternity, and, um, and help families reduce their reliance on public assistance and achieve uh, financial independence. You are absolutely right. Thank we you. need to reduce the length of <laughs> yes, that mission statement. That is too much of a mouthful. Yes. A lot of information contained just in that statement itself. Please share a little bit about the roles and responsibilities of, of your department. What is it that your staff are doing? Okay, um, number one, um, their, their main goal, I have two people working on, on this uh, establishing paternity for um, unwed um, our non-marital children it's called. We also establish other court orders for, for all our other cases. We establish orders for um, those people that, um, that are, have, do not have children but have separated and no longer uh, want to live together. Um, we make sure that all the children are covered by some type of insurance. If, um, if the um, couples or the, um, the non-custodial parent or the custodial parent cannot uh, afford it or um, or have it at their, their place of work, we make sure that uh, the children are eligible to go on Badger Care or one of the other state programs that do cover them with insurance. Um, we place children in, in foster care as well as kinship care, and uh, we enforce all the family support orders uh, and monitor those orders to make sure that payments are coming in as they're supposed to. Is that all? <clears throat> um, no, there's a few other things we do, but uh, they come along as, as things happen. If, if people do not pay and so forth, we have other processes that we have to follow up on. Uh, we do have a, um, um, an administrative uh, process that we use to, um, to uh, take away people's driver's license as well as their hunting license and business license in some cases. Uh, we also have the authority to uh, intercept taxes or tax refunds. We, um, we work with banks to freeze bank accounts when, when necessary, and we um, do and of a course, lot of different things. And so. of course, <laughs> when I said, is that all, I was kidding, yes. because there's a tremendous amount <clears throat> going on in your department. Very complex, and as you said earlier, you're not always giving the most pleasant information or necessarily working with the most pleasant people. People often that contact your department are are uh, hurting or concerned about their finances or concerned about getting financial support for their children. So your staff certainly have a difficult, challenging job. How many staff do you have in the department and what is their average caseload? Um, we have 16 uh, uh, full-time equivalents uh, as far as staff goes and then we also have one limited term employee that really works uh, 37 and a half hours a week so uh, she is also almost full-time. 
uh, their present caseload, uh, the two paternity specialists that I have, have a caseload of about 250 to, to 300 cases uh, where they're constantly working on and moving them through the system. And then the um, non-support workers, where the other child support workers have, um, have about 600 cases each, and there's seven of them. Um, so we have a total of about 5,000 cases that, that we operate. Sheboygan County is about the 12th largest child support agency in, in, the, um, in the state. In addition to those, we also have what is known as private cases, uh, private child support cases where the couples that are separating or have children usually have their own attorneys. And all we do is um, uh, make sure that the money is collected and redistributed to the proper people in those cases. So. One of the, as you know, one of the unique things about your department uh, is that you don't rely on property tax levy as much as the, as much as 20 of the 22. Uh, the Register of Deeds, as you know, is another department that doesn't rely on any property tax levy. You utilize very little. If it isn't property tax levy that's funding your department operations and your staff, uh, please share or explain how are you, where are you getting revenue to be able to do the work that you do. As part of the, um, the Child Support Act that, that um, is passed by, by the government, um, we're funded by both the federal and the state government. 66% um, of every dollar we spend, or I should say every dollar the county spends on the child support pro program is reimbursed through the federal government. Um, and then uh, we also earn incentives and are eligible for various grants that we can obtain um, through uh, both the state and federal government. And all in all, they supply us about 91% of um, our, our revenue. Uh, the other 9% comes from the tax levy, and for 2009, that's about $55,000. Which is where we'd like to keep it. <laughs> We're working on that also. So your total budget is? About a million two. About a million two, and I know I'm hitting you cold with this question, so if you don't have it, um, if you don't have it, in the memory, I understand, but of the a million dollars or so to support your department, how much is actually flowing through your department that you're helping get into the hands of families to support children? Um, we do about seven, I would say seven million dollars a quarter goes through. Well, we don't actually accept the money anyway. Years ago, we used to, um, Sheboygan County used to, uh, pay and, and collect child support. Uh, now there's a, a centralized system uh, which is located in Milwaukee called the Wisconsin Collection Trust Fund and they um, collect and distribute all of the child support. We still have maybe um, a couple hundred thousand that comes through the county but there again it comes into our office and the next day it's sent out to Milwaukee to the trust fund. So most of it you're facilitating getting through mm -hmm. through that. And Correct. you said seven million roughly um, about a quarter? Every quarter. Yeah. So so almost twenty eight million, thirty million dollars mm -hmm. a year Correct. is is being is going through the pipeline because of the work that you and your staff do. Mm -hmm. Correct. Very good. Thank you, Jim. Mm -hmm. Jim, let's talk about a few examples of the important work that's done in your department so our viewers can better understand uh, the functions there. Um, with re regard to a divorce, when there's children pre present, what level of involvement do you have in your, uh, in your, in your department with that divorce? Okay. Once, um, once the divorce is final, that's when uh, we come into play. Uh, the judges will automatically um, refer people to our, um, to our department, and they have to fill out an application. Uh, one of them has to fill out the application and uh, uh, supply a $25 fee unless they um, are indigent, um, and at that particular time the, the fee is waived, and then they fill out the questionnaire, and, and what we do is we go through the process and we get all the information from both the, both the parents to find out uh, who makes what and, and what it all is, and we calculate. Uh, we still use a percentage order calculation, but all our orders are a straight dollar amount, either bi-weekly or weekly or semi-monthly or um, sometimes monthly that um, is paid. And we calculate that all out, prepare uh, a work list for each of the parties to look at, and in some cases um, we ask them to stipulate if they're uh, in agreement to what we came up with, if there's just no way that they're going to agree to, to what we've um, developed as far as payments and, and insurance coverage and so forth, uh, then uh, we send it to court. 
and the, the court process is, is probably very slow. We are trying to work on more administrative processes to help speed things up because right now we're scheduling court hearings into July. So um, it's, uh, even though we have five branches that we utilize in Sheboygan County, there's still a, a waiting list to get into um, the various branches. So. Okay, um, and now if someone uh, uh, has uh, you know, issues on custody or visitation, how does your uh, department get involved in, in, in helping them with those items? The uh, issue of visitation and, and custody is something that we do not handle, but we, we refer them to uh, the clerk of court's office, who in turn will refer them to the family court commissioner uh, so that uh, they're handled down there. And our family court commissioner has, uh, has office hours set up that uh, they will go through and explain the process that needs to be done for um, custody and visitation rights. Okay, and if someone would uh, come into your uh, <clears throat> department who is pregnant and not sure who the father was, how, how do you get involved to help them out? Uh, there are two ways. Uh, normally, um, they come in when they are pregnant yet, and they're looking. So we do a preliminary interview, and uh, the preliminary interview is um, ask them in-depth questions as to uh, who they possibly have slept with or who could possibly be the father. Um, their, uh, their activity during the last six, eight months and so forth. And then uh, we load that all in and we try to locate uh, who may be the father of the, the child or um, in some cases if the child's already born and, and the, the father comes in and says, I'm looking for the mother of this child. Uh, uh, you'd expect them to know it, but we've had two cases this past year where where um, we needed to find the mother because uh, she was no longer living in Wisconsin or in the States, as a matter of fact. So uh, we just went back and looked and looked and looked. And we did find one, but I don't think we found the other yet. Uh, but in the case of uh, uh, a pregnancy, uh, we wait until the child is born. And then if, if by then the, the father still hasn't shown up, um, the hospital will give um, its uh, voluntary paternity uh, registration form. It's uh, where the, the mother signs the, the form and says, this is who I believe the father is and so forth. And if the father happens to be there, he can sign also and declare himself the father. And at that point in time, all we have to do is process paperwork to get, it, uh, to get his name on the birth certificate and so forth. But if he, um, if he isn't in there uh, and we're looking for him, then uh, like I said, we get the information that she'd given us previously and we go through it again. If there's any new information that she has or maybe she ran into uh, him or one of his relatives or friends or something and, and found out where he's living, then we will contact him, serve him with papers so that he does come to a, a, a preliminary court hearing um, and we um, set things up that way. Uh, and it's a, a process that hopefully will be done within um, three to six weeks, but sometimes it's three to four months. Okay. So. Now, if um, most of our viewers, I think, uh, have the, the view that the child support agency is mostly working with fathers to, to, to collect the support payments for the, the children when they're divorced, could you really mention this Wisconsin Support Collections uh, Trust? How does this work in conjunction with that program? That's where all the, um, the funds are collected and sent to on a, on a daily basis as soon as we get them or any of the other 71 counties. And now three of the tribes, I believe, in, in Wisconsin have also um, been um, sending their funds through the Wisconsin Collection Trust Fund. So I, there's about 75 different units that are sending in this money. And the money is, is distributed based on coupons that are filled out by, by the, um, the absent parent. And um, he fills in there where the money is supposed to go. And the money goes that way unless there's somebody that keys something wrong or something like that. And then we get an air listing on a daily basis that says, okay, if something was not done with this money, where is it supposed to go? And it hangs out there until we find out what it's supposed to be or where it's supposed to go, and then we have to make adjustments to the account to get it to the right place. So once, um, once we put it to the right place, then um, hopefully everybody is happy, but um, most of the time payers aren't happy. Now, do you get uh, calls from some of the, uh, the mothers asking where their check is sometimes? A lot of times, uh, because there's, um, there's so many things that can happen to payments because of the fact, if they're used to getting it for, for let's say, a two-month period or something like that, 
every every other week on a on, on a Wednesday, let's say. If that check isn't there, they're going to be on the phone calling us, and then we have to explain to them what may have happened. Like holidays are a, a big thing that that cause them to be late. Um, we're trying to work around that by encouraging them to take out um, debit cards so that the the funds are transferred um, immediately into um, Chase Bank, which is the the overseeing bank of um, our debit card process. And then that way it's, it's there within uh, 24 hours. Um, a lot of people want to do that and still don't want to. So then we ask if they have a checking account. Many do, many don't. And um, if they have a checking account, we'll try and convince them it should be put in there. It not only saves us time and the trust fund time, but it saves the, the state funds because uh, for every check they cut, they have to pay uh, an amount to the mm -hmm. trust funds. So. Sure. Now, if there's a, a court order, do you get involved in the enforcement when uh, individuals don't comply? Yes, we do. If uh, if it uh, if a court order isn't apply or adhered to, um, we'll get a call from um, more than likely from the uh, custodial parent, and uh, she or he will tell us that uh, they didn't receive their money, and uh, we have to wait at least 30 days when there's been no contact and so forth. And then at that time, what we can do is we can find out what, what the problem seems to be. If it is necessary, we, um, we can uh, have uh, the person served and have them come into a court hearing. Uh, and if that doesn't do any good and, and it goes on and continues to be a, an issue, uh, what we can do is uh, turn it over to, um, to our attorney and have them issue a, a contempt order so that they are arrested and either put in jail until uh, they can have their court hearing or um, they go to um, jail immediately and sit there and wait depending upon how their court order was written because some court orders are, court orders are written that if they fail to pay, uh, they will be arrested and placed in jail. Uh, the other thing is that uh, if it gets down to it where we just can't, can't find people or, or we're not doing anything, we can always turn it over to the dist district attorney's office and he can issue uh, a criminal warrant to have them picked up criminally. So. And then, uh, what, Jim, what would happen if uh, one or the other parties uh, move out of state? Is that something where your uh, department still stays involved with this, or does it eventually get handed off to uh, another entity like yours in another state? We stay involved as long <clears throat> as there is um, at least the child living in Wisconsin. If the whole family would move to a different state, then at that particular time, if if the um, if the one or the other parent wishes, they can have their order, um, their venue changed to another state. Uh, most of the time it doesn't happen because Wisconsin probably uh, follows up more on their cases than many other states do. Uh, we, are, um, we are close to being number one in, um, in collections and uh, establishing support orders. So it's, it's good to be from Wisconsin when you have or are in need of a child support agency. And then um, is there a time limit on child support uh, orders from the court, um, either an age or, or other time that they place on these? Um, child support payments are, you need to make child support payments um, until the child is of age and has graduated from high school. So here in Wisconsin it would be 18 um, and a graduate of high school. So he, could, he or she could um, still collect child support until, um, until the age of 19 but um, that, would, that would be as long as they can. And um, you can always collect on arrears uh, if you do fall into, or if, the, if they fell into a rear, an arrears situation where, where they didn't pay and that they had money coming from one parent or the other, um, we can um, continue to uh, collect that for them up until the, the youngest child is, is um, 39. Okay, so. all right, Adam, back to you. I'm wondering if you should explain arrears a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Arrears is what we call uh, when, when someone does not pay or when somebody doesn't pay what has been ordered to pay. If he only pays, let's say, $300 of a $500 order, then $200 is what is known as arrearage. Okay. So that goes into, um, into a separate account and stays there because whenever child support is paid, the current child support is always paid first and the other child support is held in this account until an additional payment is made. Um, and that amount is also subject to, right now it's a 1% um, 
interest per month. Soon uh, they will be changing that to a half a percent rather than, um, than a one percent because of the economy. Speaking of the economy, and earlier you mentioned this, that you receive most of your funding through the federal and state government, and uh, our viewers don't need to hear because they, they're seeing it and they're feeling it that the economy is in rough shape. And when you talk about budgets, uh, though Sheboygan County's got a pretty good track record, we rely a lot on the state. And as you well know, Jim, the state's track record, their budget deficits, the federal's track record, and the budget deficit at the national level, it's terrible. Mm. It's absolutely terrible. Um, most of our departments, other than Register of Deeds, and to a certain extent your department, aren't relying on uh, pro um, the state as much as they are tax levy. But based on what's all happening at the state and federal level, to get to the point, to get to the question, how do you see it impacting your department? Is the federal stimulus funds going to help or hinder? Is the state budget deficit, again, the 15th year that we've been dealing with a state budget deficit, is that going to negatively impact your department? Um, I'm happy to say uh, it should not, at least for the next uh, two years. Um, what happened is back three years ago in 2006, there was a Deficit Reduction Act that was signed into law. And at that particular time, child support agencies throughout Wisconsin lost about five and a half million dollars. Well, at that particular time, the, the state looked at it and they said, well, we should be able to cover some of that. And our, our money is, is matchable. So for every dollar that they put in, they would get, they could collect two from the feds at that particular time. So once they put in uh, some funding that was um, subject to match from the feds, we were kept whole as much as possible by the state. Now this year, the state said um, we can't do that anymore because of their situation. But what happened is uh, President Obama signed the American Recovery and Reduction Act, I think it, it's called. Um, and with that, uh, he has um, given some additional funds or allocated some additional funds to, um, to all child support agencies throughout the United States. Um, Shibu uh, Shibu uh, Shibu uh, the state of Wisconsin has received uh, um, a grant or um, a stimulus package of about eight and a half million dollars for federal fiscal year 2009 as well as for 2010 um, that will will run out until that will run out in um, September of, of 2010 and uh, with that we've spent a lot of meetings um, we the Wisconsin Child Support Association uh, as to what we're going to do with that and what's going to happen is that uh, we're hoping that we're going to be allowed to um, expand that through at least December of 2010 to cover us as far as our year goes, which would be beneficial. And because we're starting on the back side, basically, of uh, federal fiscal year of 2009, we missed the opportunity to use some of these funds from October of 2008 through, um, through this month now of, um, of 20, 2009. So what we're hoping to do is that that we'll be able to use at the back end of, of 2010. Uh, now we requested that information, but right now it looks as though um, Sheboygan County will be getting uh, the majority of that funding. It could be as much as $130,000, but there again, the state is looking at some of that for some of the projects they would like to do, or they would like to use some of those funds for a, a statewide project. One of them had been a statewide call center, but that was voted down and they will not have a statewide call center because presently there are three individual call centers that various county agencies can, can um, ask to join. So the good news is, even though we're doing deficit spending <laughs> right. at the federal level and at the, at the state level, Sheboygan County child support should be okay through 2010. Correct. At least that's our hope. That's our hope. And, and the, the big thing is the funds are there, but it, it, can't, uh, it has to be used for the child support program. Right. And it, if and uh, at all possible, it has to be used to increase employment. Now, um, I don't believe we need additional employees at the present time because uh, we, we've got enough work to keep everybody busy. And the only way I could have a need for additional employees is if we're going to do 
some additional work on, on things, and I don't want to hire somebody for 18 months and then have to let them go, because I know um, it's going to be tough to do, but I, I think with the staff that I have, we can, um, can do things. There might be a little slow, slow up, but uh, um, one of our biggest things right now because of the economy here in, in, the, uh, in Sheboygan County is uh, we, we do what we call a review and adjust. And that's part of the process that we have to do. It's usually something that's done every three years for most orders, but you can do it every year upon request of either party. So this re review and adjust means that we look at all the financial information of both parties and we put it together and we work on coming up with what is a fair amount to pay. Again, based on the 17% or 25% that we used to use, but uh, coming up with a straight dollar amount. And right now, uh, we're getting um, about between 20 and 25 of these requests in a week, whereas before um, the economy uh, turned, uh, we were getting maybe three to five. Remarkable. So Three I'm, to five to 25 yeah. a week. Mm -hmm. That's remarkable and another indication that a lot of people are hurting. Yeah, definitely. Jim, we only have a couple of minutes left. Is there anything else you'd like to say about the department or your staff? Oh, boy. Is there ever? Well, I just want to thank my staff because they do a tremendous job, and I know we um, we do take a lot of calls, and I, I know some even come over to to your respective offices, um, and most of those are, are complaint calls. But uh, we do what we can, and um, the staff does an excellent job. Uh, we um, we do, and they do. We get crabby every once in a while. It may come across that they're they're being rude. They really don't mean that. Uh, they are just trying to do their job. And one thing I guess that upsets them most is that when they give, when our receptionist answers the phone and gives them the information, where they'll just continue keep calling, and um, they'll get the same information from the next level and the next level, and then if the uh, supervisor answers the call, they'll get that same information. And if they finally come to me, they'll get the same information that they got way back at the beginning. It's just a process that we have to go through and we have certain guidelines that we have to follow and um, it's what we do, and we've all been doing it. Uh, I think I've only got, well, my receptionist is only there a year, but uh, all the rest of my staff have been there over 10 years that have been working for Sheboygan counties. Well, in the minute left, <laughs> a lot of information, good information today. I know how hard your staff work and the very challenging job that they have and the important job they have. If folks have questions, if any of our viewers have questions, or want to make an adjustment because of the economy and they just got laid off, who should they call? What number should they call? Oh, well, they have to do requests in writing for the review and adjust. That's okay. one of the, the process. Otherwise, if they just have questions, our, um, our number is 920-459-3041. Uh, we do have a fax number if they want to fax a, a request for uh, a review and adjust, and that number is 920-459-0399. Um, or um, we are on the county's website, which is www.co.sheboygan.wi.us. And last of all, our email address is um, childsupport at co.sheboygan.wi.us. If they go to the website, are the numbers and the email addresses right there? They, they are, yes. Very good, very good. Well, Jim, thank you so much for joining us today. A lot of information, covered a lot of ground. Thank you for the work you and your staff do. And next week, or next month rather, we'll have another department that also doesn't rely on a lot of property tax levy. So we'll be two for two, and that's our Register of Deeds, Ellen Schleicher. So until then, thanks for joining us.